Have you ever wondered what kind of weapon you want to use in Valheim? Or what kind of weapons should you be using? Well, today, I'm going to try and give you an answer to those questions. In this video, we're gonna go over each type of weapon, what kind of damage they do, how much damage they do, and versus which enemies they're good against. Before we start though, let's clarify what tenacity is and how does it work. Basically, tenacity shows you how weak or resistant an enemy is to a certain type of damage. There are five different tiers of tenacity. Tenacity 0 is very weak, so the enemy will take 200% damage. Tenacity 1 is weak, they will take 150% damage. Tenacity 2 is neutral, which is the base damage. Tenacity 3 is resistant, and they will only take 50% damage. Tenacity 4 is very resistant, and they will only take 25% of the damage. We also have immune, which means the enemy will take no damage. Next, we have to identify all the different types of damage there are in Valheim. First, we have physical damage, which includes blunt, pierce, and slash. The second type is elemental, which includes fire, frost, poison, spirit, and lightning. Each type of damage has its own advantage against specific enemies. For example, blunt damage does extra damage to skeletons, rancid remains, blobs, oozers, growth, and bone mass. The first weapon category we're going to talk about is axes. Although axes are primarily used for woodcutting, they can also serve as weapons, although they aren't very effective. There are six one-headed axes. The stone axe, the flint axe, the bronze axe, the iron axe, the black metal axe, and the Jordan bane. For two-handed axes, we have the battle axe and the crystal battle axe. One-headed axes have a three combo primary attack and one heavy attack. They're effective against the weak spot of Seeker Soldiers, which is the tail. It's important to note that the Jotun Bane inflicts poison damage. Poison damage is effective against cultists and orbs. When it comes to two-handed axes, there are better choices weapon-wise. They excel against multiple enemies at a time due to their greater attack range, making them perfect for area of effect attacks, AoE. They also have a 3 combo primary attack and 1 heavy attack, which is ideal for staggering and not back. The Crystal Battle Axe also deals spirit damage. Spirit damage applies a spirit debuff instead of causing instant damage. Debuff lasts for 3 seconds and ticks every 0.5 seconds. Spirit damage is effective against bats, ghosts, and wraiths. Here are the stat charts for all the axes. Feel free to pause the video if you want to take a closer look and screenshot them. Now, let's move on to the next category, clubs. Alright, next up, let's talk about clubs. Clubs are a great source of weapon, especially handy when you're navigating through tricky places like swamps. They're good because they deal blunt damage, which works really well against a bunch of enemies like skeletons, rancid remains, blobs, oozers, growth, and bone mass. We've got 5 one-handed clubs. The club, the bronze mace, the iron mace, the frostner, and the porcupine. And for the two-handed clubs, there's the stage breaker, the iron sledge, and the demolisher. Just like axes, one-handed clubs have a 3-hit combo where the last hit deals the most damage, along with one heavy attack. It's worth mentioning that the Frostner does extra spirit damage and frost damage, which slows down the enemies it hits, and the Porcupine deals more pierce damage. Two-handed clubs mainly have one attack, where you slam the ground and hit multiple enemies. This move, especially with the Stage Breaker, is super helpful in the early game. Overall, clubs are a solid choice of weapon that remains useful throughout the game. Here are the stats for this category. Now, let's move on to the sword. Much like clubs, swords are a great choice of weapons, especially later in a game when you unlock the most interesting ones. Swords deal slash damage, and while slash isn't super effective, most enemies in the games are neutral to that type of damage, making it pretty decent in most cases. There are 5 one-handed swords in the game, the bronze sword, the Silver Sword, the Black Metal Sword, and the Mistwalker. For two-handed swords, we have the Crom. Similar to the last two weapon types, swords have a three-hit combo attack with the last attack dealing the most damage. And of course, one heavy attack. It's important to mention that the Mistwalker also deals frost damage and spirit damage, much like the Frostner. As for the Crom, which is the badass two-handed sword, we only have one normal attack. Swords are a really good choice as a weapon and are my personal favorite to play with, especially when combined with a good shield. Now, let's check out their stats before moving on to the next type of weapon, spears.
Spears inflict pierce damage, which is not the most effective type of physical damage. That's why, in my opinion, spears are rather average despite their slightly better range compared to most weapons. They're good against only a few specific enemies, the troll and the tick. In the game, there are 6 types of spears available. The flint spear, the bronze spear, the intra bark spear, the fang spear, the carapace spear, and the abyssal harpoon. Spears offer only one attack that can be spammed repeatedly, along with a secondary attack involving throwing the spear, which can be really bad in the middle of a battle when needing to retrieve it. While the abyssal harpoon is included in this list, it's not ideal for combat. Instead, its utility lies in capturing animals like boars. In general, I don't consider spears to be a great weapon choice, but they're not entirely useless. Let's quickly review the stats before moving on to the polar arms. Polar arms are, in my opinion, the perfect weapon choice, despite the fact that they inflict pierce damage. And we will see why. There are four polar arms in this game. The bronze at the gear, the iron at the gear, the black metal at the gear, and the Hemin Nalf. All arms, like most of the previous weapons, have a 3 combo attack with the last one dealing the most damage. And what makes this weapon so great is a secondary attack that knocks back enemies all around you. Additionally, the Hemin Nalf is, in my opinion, one of the coolest weapons in the game because it inflicts lightning damage and has a really cool animation. In conclusion, I think Polar Arms are a great weapon to pick up, especially if you play with friends. The spinning attack can be really helpful to finish enemies off. Let's take a look at the stats and move on to the knives. Knives are a blast to play with, especially if you enjoy sneaking around and surprising enemies. They inflict pierce and slash damage, and with the exception of the silver knife, that also deals spirit damage. There are 6 types of knives in this game. The flint knife, the copper knife, the abyssal razor, the silver knife, the black metal knife, and the skull and hattie, which are two-handed. Knives feature a 3 combo attack with the final strike dealing additional damage. Secondary attack involves a big leap that inflicts damage upon landing. I definitely believe that everyone should try using knives at least once to explore the stealth aspect of this game, as it can be incredibly enjoyable. Now, let's dive into the statistic and proceed to our final melee weapon category, the fists. Fists only consist of one weapon, the Flesh Rippers. They deal slash damage. They don't feature any combo attacks, instead you can just simply spam the primary attack. Additionally, they have a secondary attack, which is a kick. The Flesh Rippers play similarly to knives in terms of gameplay. They are also very enjoyable to use if you prefer a rogue assassin aesthetic and gameplay style. Now that we've covered mini weapons, let's proceed to ranged weapons, bows and staffs. If you haven't tried using a bow yet, you're truly missing out. Bows are an essential tool in my opinion, and should be part of everyone's arsenal. In Valheim, we have 5 different types of bow. The crude bow, fine bow, jogger fang, the huntsman bow, and the spine snap. Additionally, there's a crossbow called the herbalist. Bows require arrows to function, and currently, there are 11 types of arrows in Valheim, 4 of which deal elemental damage. The frost arrow, the fire arrow, the poison arrow, and the silver arrow. Bows feature a charge up mechanic. The more you charge it, the more damage and speed it gains, resulting in a straighter trajectory. It's worth noting that the Dragon Fang deals poison damage, while the Spine Snap inflicts spirit damage, which is pretty useless in my opinion. The Herbalist is quite similar to bows but utilizes bolts as ammunition, including a Bone Bolt, the Iron Bolt, the Black Metal Bolt, and the Carapace Bolt. There's a small reload time before you can shoot the bolt, and it also pushes you back slightly upon firing. Now that we've covered bows, let's delve into what I consider the coolest category of all, staffs. Staffs are definitely the most unique weapon type in the game, dealing elemental damage. We have 4 different staffs in this game, the staff of embers, the staff of frost, the staff of protection, and the dead razor. It's also important to mention that staffs use E tier instead of stamina. To get E tier, you have to eat foods that are infused with it. The Staff of Embers deal blunt damage and fire damage, launching powerful fireballs. The Staff of Frost picks frost damage and rapidly sprays the ice shards, similar to a machine gun. The Staff of Protection utilizes health to cast a shield around you and your allies. Finally, Dead Razor also utilizes blood, but this time to summon tamed skeletons to fight by your side. Staff offer a truly unique gameplay experience and are best used in combination, as each has a specific role to fulfill. Alright, so that concludes our review of every weapon in Valheim. Next, I'll show you the best weapon in each category based on my personal opinion.
For the axes, the best one are definitely the Jotunberg for its poison damage and the Crystal Battle Axe for the added spirit damage. In the club category, Frostner stands out for its frost slow effect, while the Procupine excels with its extra pierce damage. Among swords, the Mistwalker undoubtedly takes the crown due to its diverse damage output, and the crown is a standout choice because it's simply badass. When it comes to spears, the Carapace Spear is a top pick for being the superior upgrade. For Polar Arms, the clear winner is Himmentelf, for its lighting damage, which not only deals extra damage but also staggers enemies when they're in water. It's worth noting that the lightning damage is the only elemental damage capable of staggering foes. In the nice categories, the Skull and Harry, as the best upgrade, reigns supreme. As for the Fist, there's only one option, so no need to elaborate further. In the boat category, Dragger Fang stands out for its poison damage and low stamina cost. Additionally, the Huntsman Bow is highly effective for stealth attacks, as it doesn't aggro with nearby enemies due to its silent nature. Lastly, for staffs, as previously mentioned, they're all co they all complement each other perfectly and should be used together for optimal effectiveness. Alright everyone, this was my Valheim weapon guide. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If I miss anything, please mention it in the comments below and I will be sure to check it out. Anyway, if you appreciate the video, consider liking or disliking if you did not. Also, if you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing since I have many more projects in mind. Of course, it will be also greatly appreciated since I just started out on YouTube. Thanks for watching.